we're going to look at node interfaces. And one of the best examples you can find in the Z plugin is Projection Master. Projection Master is just one button that works with the note interface. So if I press this, it launches a note interface here. And a note interface, you can have images, you can have switches, like this switch right here. And this could be a radio button. And as you can see there, it's loading images and it's changing the behavior of some of the buttons. And you can have some buttons, you can have a lot of stuff in a node interface. You can actually create a whole plugin, as you can see in Projection Master, that works just with node interfaces. The basics of a node interface is node I button and node I switch. Now, if I just use a node I button and I trigger this, nothing happens. So to create a note interface, you actually have to use something more. A way to tell ZBrush that you are actually asking for a note interface is to set a variable and place an empty note in there to get the result of what the user pressed. So if I, if I now trigger this, I get button one, which is that note type button there. I press it and this variable now has the result. So if I output this variable, and I just made the second button here, so button one and button two, and I'm outputting the variable result, that variable where I place that note. So now if I reload and I place note interface, I got my two buttons. And if I press button one, I get one. And if I press button two, I get two. So that result is which control I pressed now, when working with switches, a switch is not going to actually trigger the rest of the note interface. So if I just reload this and I press note interface, now I got two switches. I can turn them on and off. The thing is, I can just turn them on and off. And then when I press one of these buttons, the result I get is just, well, that button was pressed. So a way you can get the switch value is by using note I get. So here I'm saying note I get three and the third control is switch one. This here should give me switch one, whatever button I press. So switch one is one, which means switch one was pressed. If switch one is not pressed, and even if I press button two, then it tells me switch one, which is the third control, was zero. It was not selected. To avoid creating a bunch of uh, global variables, you can place a note interface inside a routine and just call it from any button. If you're creating a simple note interface like the one I've created here, you won't need to place it in the loop. But for example, if I want to call my note interface, press a button and then keep doing stuff, I want to re redraw that note interface on my screen. And a way we can do that is by placing it inside of a loop. I can give my loop a really big number like 999. And if I trigger it, I can press a button. It will give me that note there because I left that there. And then it gets redraw. If I press escape, it will just exit the note. Now a way we can exit, also exit this, is by using loop exit. So I could say, if result equals two, loop exit. So if result equals the second button, exit. And this would give me this result. If I reload, I can press button one, it gets redraw. I can press switch one, switch two, it gets redraw. And I press button two, it goes away. Now, you notice this behavior. When I press button one, it goes away and comes back again. Now we can use a special command that we haven't talked about before and it's called I freeze. And if we use I freeze, that redrawing will not be visible. Now I freeze is a very simple command and it can be used for many different things. For example, if you have a, a script that presses many buttons, in order you if you use I freeze and you place all those button presses inside of I freeze, 
you won't see the button, the buttons actually being pressed and the things have been happening in ZBrush. You'll have a very smooth operation and nothing like that will happen. So iFreeze is very good. You can use it in macros and in, in any, any other script. So if I now reload and I press Note Interface, I press my button and you can see that it, you don't see that going your way and coming back off the Note Interface. Another useful command is just exit. And when that command is called, it will exit the full script. So for example, let's say I had something after my routine, some other code, and there was a button that I pressed that just want, I just want to exit the, the, the script. I don't want to carry on with the other stuff down here, or even if I have some stuff down here and I don't want to exit, I could use exit. And exit is actually going to do the same thing as pressing the escape bar when you're in the middle of a script. So exit. It's just going to do the same thing. We'll use it later on and it will make more sense. I want to make a little observation about the loop. Now this loop is not getting drawn one time after the other. If I call my note interface, the loop has been drawn once. And when I press a button, it gets drawn a second time. Okay, so it's not getting drawn constantly. It just gets drawn every time you press a button. So if I, for example, give a loop, use a loop count here, and I make my first button name that loop count, you'll see what I'm talking about. Note interface, so zero. If I press it again, now it's one second. You can see where I'm going with this. I'll press button two to exit the loop. There are two special commands to read your mouse position in ZBrush. And those are mouse V pause and mouse H pause. So mouse V pause is mouse vertical position and mouse H pause is mouse horizontal position. Let's say that in your note interface, you needed to read your mouse position. Now, if I just use a normal note for my result like this, and I come here, reload, note interface. So my first button is just outputting the number of loops, and my second button is giving me my mouse position. 556 was my mouse position when I pressed that note interface. Now if I press this button here, now my mouse position is 223. If I move my mouse a little bit to the right, still inside this button, 222. Okay, so I'm only getting my mouse position when I press that button. If I want to get my mouse position every time I move, what I can do is give this note some time. So we know that this third argument of note is the time. Let's say 500 milliseconds. Every half second, I want to read the mouse position. So now if I reload this, note interface, you see that the, the loop number, the loop count is increasing because it's timed and I got my mouse position right there, my vertical position up here, all the way it's zero, should be zero to down here, 700. We'll look at mouse position and using, using those commands to do some other stuff, but this is a way you can read the mouse while a note is there. You keep looping through the note and you, you have access to your mouse position. It's really hard to press that button to exit because it's just looping through. So I could potentially use a delay here and to take some time so that I can actually press the button. Otherwise I'll have to press escape here, but you can see where I'm going with this. My um, Pi menus were created using this system. We typically use the, the first control as our background, the background for our, for our note interface. And there are many different options for a note type button. And for a note type button can be, you can use it for an image, for a background, for a button, for many things. So let's look at how we can create a background using no type button. So the first the first parameter is button name. We don't actually need the name for a background, so we'll just leave that blank. The second one is button icon, and this can be a PSD image. So you can have a background image for your note interface. 
at the end you can control your background opacity your image opacity your text opacity so you could change the opacity of your image as for your last parameter there let's carry on I'm not going to use an image so I'm just going to leave that blank uh, after that we have initially pressed I can leave that blank initially disabled I'll use one to disable it so that when we press the background nothing happens then we have optional age relative position okay so because it's the background everything will be relative to the background the edge position is the horizontal position and the view position is the vertical position up and down we can see here positive value offset from left negative value offset from right and zero is automatic so if we use a positive value like one is it's the offset from some left from the zbrush window so one in age would be around here on the on the left and the same goes for vertical one would be up here and if I say 500 for example I would come down here same for horizontal 500 would be around here somewhere 500 pixels if I use negative minus one on the vertical would be down here minus one on the horizontal would be around here and after we create the background everything will be re relative to that background and not the zbrush window now because we're using the background this will be dependent on the width and the height of the background i suggest you play around with this and use different values and find out for yourself how exactly this works for now we're just going to use one and one for the h and the v now let's give it a width and i'm just going to give it a width of 200 and then a height and I'll give it a height of 100 and then we have button color so you can determine the, the background color for your for background here using this type of value so 0x and then you use an RGB value like we've seen in the iButton on one of the first videos on this series we can then control the opacity of the text the image and the background down here so I'll just leave it this at zero zero and then when I go to the opacity background opacity I can leave everything at zero and that will give me this type of background and now I can have total control over my buttons and switches because if if now using the H and the V relative position I can control the position of my buttons and my switches which can be images or controls let's create something similar to message ok commands so I'm gonna use my second I button for a message and I'm not gonna use an image here so I'll leave that blank I'm gonna leave it initially unpressed I'm gonna say it's disabled I'm gonna give it a relative position of 1 1 so it will be on the top left position and if I check out how it is right now there you go there's our message now it has a background but I can control that with opacity so if I carry on we're now at V relative position so if I ignore giving it a width and a height and then I move on to the color I can leave it at zero I don't want any color and then the opacities first we have background opacity I don't want any opacity on the background I want opacity on the text and I don't want any opacity on the image because there is no image and we should have that result right there now oh yeah it's in black because I give it zero and zero is black so I could give it let me see text color is this second one I could give it a white color and white is six F's I'm pressing escape to leave my note interface so there we go please select an option and that's that's right there the second control now let's give it some options let's use I button here and say for example okay and I like to use some spaces before and after to make the button a bit bigger and I'll use a fourth control to say cancel and now I gotta read the output of the user whatever button he pressed so these are actually the two buttons that we're gonna have if I just 200 I said 
is it two a hundred height and we see that that's a bit too big let's try 50 and check that out we get something like that and now i can say if the result equals three it's okay so i'm gonna no do a note saying cool and if the result equals four which is the fourth control i'm gonna say cancelled and loop exit and that's gonna give us this result i press ok cool i need to exit after i say cool so i'll just place this loop exit down here if i reload press ok yeah cool goes away really fast because we're in a loop and for something like this we didn't we wouldn't actually need it to place it in a loop but you can see what's happening if i call node interface again cancelled shows up it goes away really fast <clears throat> now we know how to use node interfaces now and we know that we can pass a variable so let's say we place the result here and then we grab the result down here let's just call it result like that and create a variable here for example called the result pass it a zero and then we could potentially do a note here and this is going to be a string so i don't want to do a zero i want to do that and then because i already have result there i'll use the same here rlt and this is still a local variable and this is a different variable which is a, a global variable there so remember we use for global variables we use g let's just do that make these all nice and here instead of a note i would say var set rlt which is the result and then have a loop exit down there and now we should have what we wanted in the first place reload note interface okay cool note interface cancel cancelled so i hope with these examples you understand more more or less how the note interface works and the things that you can do with it are endless we're going to do some examples later on uh, probably in the advanced tutorial showing how you can use note interfaces to create really cool plugins so don't forget to like and subscribe check out my gumroad artstation facebook page and I'll see you in the next video.